Hey everyone, you're listening to Kinda Tempted. I'm Kimai. And I'm Tanisha. And today, we're kind of tempted to swallow our fears, part one. Let's go! Woo! <laughs> Alrighty, Tanisha, what are we talking about today? So today, guys, we got a little heavy topic, okay? We got Oof. a heavy hitter here, okay? She thick. That's all I'm going to say. She really so, is. <laughs> she really is. <laughs> Today, guys, we're talking about food, how it relates to fitness, our mindset surrounding food. Um, mostly when we were growing up, I feel like that's going to be a good portion of the episode. Yeah. Um, and also a little bit of body image, because I feel like all of these topics just tie in so seamlessly together. So. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about today. Um, I just want to start off and say that we are not claiming to be experts on anything that we're talking about today. We're just talking about our experiences and maybe mm -hmm. what we've heard from other people that we've talked to. So please be mindful that what we discussed today could potentially be triggering to you. Read my description again before continuing if you need to, um, and don't listen if you know that if that is what is best for you. Um, today we are going to be talking about our eating, like our experiences with eating disorders too. So just keep that in mind. Um, and I also just wanna say thank you to one of our listeners who have been very, they have been very vocal about um, what they would like to hear and topics that they enjoy. And we did ask this listener questions to help guide our episode. So shout out to you. You know who you are. Okay. We DM'd you. Okay. Thank you. We love you. Um, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for enjoying our content. And it really makes us happy that you want to contribute and like give us ideas on what to talk about. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if any of you guys have suggestions, of what you want us to talk about in future episodes, feel free to reach out, let us know, DM us. Um, we would really appreciate it. So I feel like before we get into the nitty gritty of food, our relationship with food, there are deep, deeply rooted causes. Deeply, deeply rooted. <laughs> yes, that have shaped our outlook and perspective on certain things in our life. And the one that we want to talk about today to preface this subject <laughs> is our family and how they have affected us as we were growing up. Of course, you know, as we talk about our family, there are good and bad things, but we're going to be talking about the things that we can remember that has caused us to look at food negatively or look mm -hmm. at ourselves negatively. Mm -hmm. So also take these with these things with like a grain of salt as well okay mm -hmm. we just want y'all to understand that the things that we have experienced they are for certain reasons and as we grew older we kind of looked at our past to decide and kind of analyze why did this happen or what might have contributed to um x y and z if we don't know for sure right so i mean i would recommend y'all to do that but we're going to go ahead and do our little analysis or what we can remember, our traumatic moments. Mm -hmm. As I've said before, I have a lot of trauma in my life. <laughs> Gosh, same. And like, I don't know about you, Kimai, but I did not know how much um, trauma that I had in my childhood until I started typing out our notes for this episode. Yeah. And I was like, damn, bitch, you're still typing like an hour later. Like, what is going on in your head? Like. <laughs> It's our coping mechanisms, you know, that help us to help us get here. That's, that's it. <laughs> and these are actually our personal therapy sessions and you guys are just here to listen. Really? So yeah. Um, yeah. I hope you enjoy. There's, there's a lot of deep seated trauma here. So <laughs> yeah. get ready guys. Um, but a happy resolution at the end. So don't, don't, don't be too yeah. sad yet. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's going to be in part two, but like buckle your seatbelts. Get ready. It's going to be a wild ride, okay? <laughs> it is. It's going to be wild, okay? Do you want right. to start us off? Okay. So if we're talking about family, mm -hmm. I guess I can just explain generally how my family views food. Um, dude, my family eats a lot. We eat yeah. a fuck ton. And mm -hmm. it just never stops. All of our holidays are... Food is the main event, okay? For yeah. all of our holidays, Same. no matter what. 
we gather together and we eat until we can't eat anymore and then we eat more snacks okay so <laughs> that is how we celebrate holidays always room um, for dessert always if you like if you don't have a dessert stomach like I don't know what to say to you like I think you need to have one very important. like how will also teach me <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's my family in a nutshell do you have like a what about you Kim I do you have like a general summary about how your family is with food um I think very similar especially mm-hmm. on my mom's side so my mom if y'all don't know her she expresses her love with food and cooking, yes. um, which has contributed to many traumas in my life. But that's how she basically shows her affection. She cooks a lot. She's con- And it's a- also her hobby. So she loves to cook and she loves to cook for other people. And um, with any celebration, there's always a bunch of food. Yes. And I mean, I don't want to I don't want to think, I don't want y'all to think that I'm taking it for granted, but like, Mm -hmm. it's to the point where we're like, please stop, like stop making so much food because we don't have space in (laughs) the refrigerator. We have too many freezers. Like it's concerning. Right. Um, But yeah, like my relationship, my family's relationship with with food is like, that's our gathering spot, Mm -hmm. our gathering time. It's always, you know, around dinner because we we don't really go out especially during covid to hang out during like any event it's always like let's go to this person's house and have dinner we're going to go to this person's house for the holidays and of course there's going to be food so a lot of our bonding time revolves around food as well yeah i mean i totally feel you with like the too many freezers we have three refrigerators they're all full if we added another oh refrigerator that one would be full too Exactly. And yeah. my mom, also her hobby is like cooking. When she has free time, she looks up videos on YouTube how to make more food. <laughs> um, and then she will cook for like an army instead of the family of three that we have in our household right now. Yeah. So I completely understand that, Kim. I? Like my mom, she really spends her days off cooking as if we're going to starve the rest of the week. Like, yes. girl, I'm trying to <laughs> eat out once in a while too, okay? Like, I'm trying to enjoy my life. I can't be eating fried rice every day, okay? Yeah, it's <laughs> tasty, but it's it's also a lot, so. <laughs> yeah, dude. But, I mean, the way that we want to shape this episode is that a lot of the way that I've interacted with my, with my family has contributed to my relationship with food and whether Mm -hmm. it was a positive or negative one and I just remember that when I was younger a lot of my family members they are very they were very very critical one side specifically if you know you know but that's fine Um, (laughs) (laughs) but pretty much like there was just a lot of comparison going on and compared me compared to my cousins or friends around me as I mentioned in previous episodes I grew up a little chubbier a little bigger than everyone else and that was something that my family would point out all the time and stuff like oh you're not as skinny or you're not as slim as this person or that Mm -hmm. person and I was also the youngest so like I had a lot of insecurities because I was the youngest but I like was one of the bigger ones and it's like oh like that also contributed to like how I looked at myself and stuff like oh I look old or something because I'm big or like people look at me this way because I'm big and stuff Mm -hmm. and I just remember that my family they there's one particular moment there are many moments but the one I'm gonna mention now is that when I was in elementary school elementary school guys my cousin was getting married and I didn't have a dress um, or like an updated dress like it was kind of like an older one so another cousin had let me try on her older dress her Mm -hmm. older dresses that she wasn't wearing anymore and this cousin was maybe like she's over like 10 years older than me but she took care of me really well and stuff so she was like oh these are old dresses that you can have and wear if And um, if you like it, wear it to like the wedding and stuff. So I chose two dresses that I felt super duper like cute and like happy in. And I was so appreciative because this cousin was sharing her fashion with me and I looked up to her so much, right? And um, so she helped me get ready and stuff. And then I wore like this cute blue dress with like a lace trim at the top. And I felt so cute, right? Mm -hmm. but then after the ceremony at the church I was in the car with her dad and he told me 
Kim, I, you need to lose five more pounds if you ever want to wear that dress again. Oh my yeah. God. And mind you, I'm in elementary school. Okay. Like that. I She's already, still a I, baby. yeah, like I, oh I'm God. still growing into my body. Okay. Yeah. And just, I, I mean, I hate that this has impacted me so much, but it definitely did. Mm-hmm. And hearing that made me think that like, oh, like I need to lose weight. I'm, I'm fucking in like fifth or sixth grade and I need to focus on losing weight, you know? And I think that's, um, I think that's one of the earliest memories that I have of me realizing that I need to control myself or like mm-hmm. what I'm eating is not good and stuff. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. That's, that's one story. <laughs> I mean, I can definitely see how that planted the seed into your mind that you needed to change um, in order to feel accepted. And yeah. yeah, he definitely had absolutely no right <laughs> to say that to you or like to anybody else. And dude, I'm sorry that that's that fine. To you. Like he, fuck you, uncle. Honestly. No, honestly, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. I don't talk to him anymore. Okay, he's a jerk. <laughs> Good. We don't need him. We cut them out of the life. Okay? I know. Seriously. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I just a lot of my a lot of my family members they are they were they are still like pretty toxic and. You know, I, I don't feel shy about talking about this because mm-hmm. I fucking grown up. I am tired of trying to be the little nice niece and just yeah. letting them say whatever they want to me. I'm standing up for my fucking self because I know they were fucking wrong. Okay. Yeah. So go ahead. Kick me when I'm down and in the fucking fifth grade, bitch. Okay. I'm grown and I don't have to talk to you if I don't want to. Okay. Oh my God, dude, (laughs) like some people like either they will lash out and project because they think the same things about themselves Mm -hmm. or um, I know with, okay, so my experience with some certain Asian families, okay, it's just wired into their DNA and they literally cannot not say things like that. And I just, it's a very unfortunate reality uh, that I have also experienced as well. Dude, that... (laughs) Honestly, the fact that you like remember the dress and the setting and everything just speaks to like how much this has affected you. That's just crazy. Yeah. But you know what? If I could find that dress again, I'd fucking rock it right now. Okay. That's fucking <laughs> right, girl. Yes. God. Fuck that guy. Okay. I, I know. <laughs> but what about you? Like you said that you also experienced something like that. So I, I was a, a chubbier kid too, like elementary school, middle school. It's like, I still have my baby fat, you know? Um, and there was never anything specifically targeted towards me that came from my family. Um, but there would be a lot of offhanded comments like towards other people who they thought were larger or fat, you know? Um, I remember just recently too, like this is how ingrained it is into certain aunts and uncles of mine. Like we were driving and we came across an intersection and a woman was walking across the street, like at the crosswalk and they were just bagging on her for her weight. They would call her gross and ugly and lazy and just all of these terrible things. And this was very recent, (laughs) um, but this also happened throughout my childhood as well like I just remember that being a constant thing Mm -hmm. and mind you when like you don't know that person's life okay you're judging them for all of these things that might have nothing to do with their weight like you don't know what kind of um health issues they might have Mm -hmm. you don't know like what kind of lifestyle they lead so a lot of the comments that they made were very unfair But I didn't realize that until later, looking back as an adult, you know, knowing more about things like this. Um, But that's just something that really stuck with me when I was younger. And so I equated like being fat to being a bad person. And you could only be a good person if you were skinny. And that was deeply ingrained into my mind until I grew up and then like actively did work to get over those thoughts. So yeah. a lot of damage was done there. Thank you, uncle and aunt. I really, yeah. really appreciate that. Uh, uh, we don't need just, that anymore. We don't need that. You know, fuck no. all these people. Um, 
Jeez. Dude. So, so many more traumas that like I could talk about, but yeah, that's something notable that um, I thought of when you shared your story. And it's just really unfortunate that this is how it's been for us, you know? Yeah. And it's always, I feel like, well, like when it, for me, when it was targeted towards me, I always felt like it was when I was feeling my fucking best. And that's when they're like, Ooh, she's feeling good. Let's knock her down. You know? And like, I feel maybe it's because I was feeling great. And when they said those things, it hurt me so much that I remember them but I always felt like it was something in into that extent where I was feeling fucking great and then they dropped me like a ball you know I mean like yeah like as a fifth grader sixth grade grader you shouldn't have to worry about something like that it shouldn't be something on your mind 24 7 Mm -hmm. (sighs) my goodness and it's Um, like a happy day you know like you're celebrating someone's two people's love for each other right and like the fucking first thing that comes out of my uncle's mouth when I get in the car is that like damn you could have been like what a beautiful ceremony okay yeah <laughs> like it, literally anything else anything else comment on the weather or something sir the sky is blue <laughs> you know like <laughs> okay jeez dude if he's listening to this which I probably he's probably not fuck you uncle okay fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it even if you weren't gonna say it okay yeah but I mean, another story kind of moving towards um, like food. Mm -hmm. When I was in high school, my mom opened her own restaurant. It's something that, you know, it was her hobby. So she really wanted to be a caterer, open up her own restaurant, be around food, right? Um, Around that time, though, I was alone. Uh, Like my both my siblings were out of the house in college Mm -hmm. or living their life. And I honestly used food to cope with the loneliness. And I did not understand that that was what I was doing until maybe like after um, graduating from high school or like Mm -hmm. maybe around now when I'm typing this out. And so I felt like I was like, I would literally come back from school to like an empty house. Like I would, I would eat dinner alone. And then at that point I was like, you know, I'm I would wait until my parents would come home because my dad, he had a full-time job, but after work, he would go help my mom at the restaurant until like 10 PM and they would come home together. Um, And so I would wait for them to eat, which, you know, it's late at night. I, as you know, when I'm in school, I shouldn't be up super late. And especially I don't want to be eating that late at night, Mm -hmm. but I would, kind of like starve myself or eat really unhealthy foods to last until my parents would come home to eat with them. Mm -hmm. And the food that they would bring back would usually be like whatever was left from the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I would, I like got really, really moody during that time and kind of like acted out because I was honestly probably fucking depressed and just fucking alone all the time. Right. And so my dad, he is the greatest person in the world. He knew what was going on, but he had to balance like my mom and also me at the same time. And so he tried to make me happy by buying me food that I really like. So at that time, I had like this one sushi restaurant on speed dial because I called it so many times because he would be like, oh, like, can you call in your order and I'll pick it up and bring it home? Like, and then when food didn't satisfy me, like nothing would satisfy me because like for a while, that was what he used to appease me and like mm-hmm. make me happy. But when that didn't work, if I was just feeling like extra moody that day and like I didn't want to accept anything, then like it was a fucking struggle for him because, and I, I, I realized that and I feel bad about it, but like I was going through a lot of shit during that time, you know, as like yeah. a high schooler and like I didn't have any, I, didn't, I felt like I didn't have my family around me. And so like, I felt like my life was at home, at least was revolved around food. It was like, okay, if I get what I want with food, I'm happy. If I don't get what I want, then like, I'm fucking miserable. And it was, it was literally that high or that low. And it was just super unhealthy. You know, like if I didn't get the food I wanted, I would only want unhealthy food. So like instant noodles all the time, Vienna sausage, hot Cheetos, chips, and also just, like I said, eating really irregularly. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think if I didn't have tennis at that time, I would have like been a lot more um, overweight than I was. I, I was a little um, chubbier, but I, because I was working out all the time with tennis, I was able to control it. But after graduating, that still stuck with me. And then I think that's why I contributed to a lot of my weight gain 
around mm-hmm. senior year of high school and also uh, first year of college. Mm-hmm. Dang, dude. I mean, yeah, that, situ- that, that situation kind of conditioned you to see food as a reward. Yeah, and it really did. Your dad was, you said he was working full time and then helping your mom at the end of the day. And obviously because he's a good dad, like he feels guilty about, you know, not being home. So he's like, what can I do to make my daughter happy and like try to make up for the lost time? That's, that's so hard. And (laughs) I can see how you didn't realize that uh, you were using food in this way too. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes like you don't realize things until you look back as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think, I mean, I don't know what I would have done if I realized it back then, but like looking back, I was like, damn, like really the only thing that made me happy from my parents was if they gave me enough attention to buy me the food that I wanted. Yeah. (laughs) But yeah. I mean, I think also like with that, I also was super conscious of what I was eating because I knew that um, I was really picky, not really picky, but I was high maintenance in what I wanted to eat. But when I was in like social situations, I would eat like very little because mm-hmm. I knew that like the people I was around, they probably ate less than me and I didn't want to look like a fat ass around them. So like sometimes I would even eat a little bit and then like come home and eat a little bit more just mm-hmm. to be like, okay, like I wasn't, I didn't eat enough back then. So I'm just going to like fucking eat as much as I can when I'm home because I didn't get that when I was out. Yeah. And like, that's such a sensitive time to be going through all of this too. Like as a teenager, like, you know, every, all the problems that you have when you're a teenager, your brain isn't fully developed and every problem that you have just seems like it's so much, like it's so, it's a hundred percent of what you're thinking and doing and it's a lot. So dude, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But we are past that time now. Thank God. I can buy my own fucking good food now. <laughs> that's fucking right. <laughs> she an independent woman. Okay, that's what she is. Like, don't okay. get me wrong. I still fucking love food and it brings, it helps me with the ups and downs in life. Same. But I, under- <laughs> I understand that it's not my life anymore. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we call growth, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, growth. growth. G-R-O-W-T-H, growth. <laughs> She's spelling again. That means a serious, Okay. <laughs> So I actually have my family split up into different groups that thought different things and like gave me different Mm -hmm. mentalities. Um, So my dad and my uncles would regularly enforce a clean your plate mentality. Everything that you scooped onto your plate into your bowl, you eat it all. If you don't finish it, you get crap from for everybody sure. and yeah. it's better to overeat than it is to waste food mm-hmm. because they come from a time and a generation where wasting food could have meant life or death okay like honestly yeah. in my family that's what it was same with me and i can understand the mentality but i also understand that we in this current time when i'm young okay i am not in a position i'm lucky to be in Um, I'm lucky to not be in a position where I might starve um, if we Mm -hmm. were to waste food. So that being said, this was a very traumatic um, mentality for me because I would be stressed at mealtimes. Every single time I was eating at home and my parents were home, I was worried if I didn't eat my food, I wouldn't be able to leave the table. I wouldn't be able to like go do anything else. I wouldn't be able to like start my homework, you know, all these things. And Everything depended on me cleaning my plate, (laughs) right? Um, And I was also, um, I was a little chubby, but I was also tinier than like other kids, like in the general population. So I think my family was also worried that maybe I wasn't eating enough. And so when I had like a few bites of rice left in my bowl, like they would fight me to try to finish it because I think they were worried that I wasn't going to grow the way that I needed to. So I can also understand the concern there. Mm -hmm. Um, But dude, when on the other hand, my, like the rest of my family, like um, my aunts, when I went to go eat at their houses, like I did not have to clean 
my plate. I could eat as much as I wanted. And if I was done, if I said I was done, I was done. And they were like, it's fine. You don't have to overeat. You're okay. And I could leave the table and I could have the freedom to choose and listen to my body and say like, how much food do I actually need to eat during this one meal time, right? So because of that kind of um, difference, I would be excited to go eat at my aunt's place or somewhere else because I wouldn't have the pressure and the stress of trying to finish my meal every meal time. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, so God. Um, and they were very adamant about like, don't force yourself to eat. Like you don't need to stuff yourself until you feel sick. But then, yeah, my dad was completely opposite and he, mm -hmm. you know, he would clean his plate and then be upset and like sometimes yell, okay, lovingly, lovingly yell. We love dad, okay, <laughs> we love him, but um, traumatic for me when I was younger. Um, and yeah, I also talked about how my parents, we, my mom cooks a lot. When we go to the stores, like we would buy more, like way more food than we need for three people, yeah. three, four people in the household. Um, and because of that, I also hated grocery shopping as a kid because we would go uh, grocery store hopping. Like, oh my God, it would take the entire fucking day. We would go to like four or five different markets. We're going to the Asian market. Now we're going to go to Vons. Now we're going to go back to the Asian market because we forgot something else. Oh, but there's a coupon deal at like Stater Brothers or something like that. Jeez. So we got to go there. Okay. So I would also dread this time. And I think that might have also like turned me off from food. And then I have a story actually about you, Kim, I, um, when we used to, I think we meal prepped, right? When, when I lived mm. with you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for about a year. And I remember that we would go grocery shopping together and I, <laughs> whatever produce we bought, I would feel an intense need to wash and eat all of the produce as soon as possible. Yeah, she and really did. Yes. <laughs> I was like, we got to eat these strawberries fucking right now. And Kim, I was like, bro, chill. Like, they're not going to go bad for like, I don't know, like four days or something. Yeah, like, a few days. Relax, right? But the voice I had in my head was, oh my God, we have so much food at home that we can sometimes never finish in time and then it would go bad and then I would feel terrible about it and it would just clutter the refrigerator, whatever. And that was the trauma that I had in my heart that made me um, be so aggressive about like all the food that I bought with Kimai. And I didn't realize that until typing this out actually. And I'm like, wow, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So I actually remember that one time you were like cutting cucumbers and then you're like, should I cut all of them? I was like, yeah, like cut them and like, we'll eat them as you know, the week goes on. And yeah. then like the next day I go down and like the cucumbers are like almost gone. I was like, I was like, damn, she really likes cucumbers or something. <laughs> but yeah, it makes dude. sense. Cause like, if you saw it already cut and ready, you're just like, we need to fucking eat this before mm -hmm. it's done, you know, before we can't anymore. I was like, let me move as far away as possible from what my parents' home is like. Let me make sure I eat everything instead of leaving things to go bad. So I definitely had that kind of stress in my mind <laughs> during that time. Yeah, I can, I totally relate to like you, um, like your dad's and your aunt's. That's like, my dad was like your aunt or is like your aunt. And then my mom is like your dad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like my dad was like you don't need to overeat he's all he's always told me this since I was younger like it's all about portion control you don't need to restrict yourself yeah. um and stuff like that I mean I should have fucking listened but like you know shit happens it's hard and my yeah my mom's just like oh eat this oh there's only a piece left eat it right. if I'm like fucking dying you can eat this one piece and I'm yeah. like I can't you know like and right. so eating with my mom or like at home sometimes it's like she wanted to clear everything that was on the table when she brought it out and she would bring a shit ton of shit out, man. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. like, I don't know how any of us finished it, but like all of us went through like a fat phase. So like, that's probably how, and nowadays I'm more on kind of like listening to my dad and channeling him because I, well, for one now I get a lot smaller portions than before, but also if I don't finish it, or if my mom is telling me to eat something I don't want, I can respectfully decline and not feel as guilty as I did before. I still feel guilty guys. That's some, that's something trauma can never erase as yeah. quickly. We're working so, on it. We're working. Yeah. On we're it. working on it. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So many similarities, honestly. And just think about how 
how similar other people are to us too if we have these experiences yeah and (sighs) I just want to say it's definitely a journey and you will grow when you are ready to grow there's no rush I hope that hearing this and if you can relate to it you know that you're not alone in these experiences and we are still going through them we've gotten really really far and to a a lot more positive and healthier place and if you haven't gotten there yet you'll get there okay yeah we're not perfect yet you guys um but yeah Yeah. i hope (laughs) these stories maybe help you understand what you went through when you were younger um maybe help you understand the the thoughts and the mentality that you might have now surrounding Mm -hmm. things like this um because i didn't realize a lot of these things until i started like you know typing out our notes so this was pretty helpful for me to try to understand why I think the certain way that I do now um, and back then. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And then I also want to mention just a last thing about my family. Uh, when I was talking about how my aunts and uncles would berate people who they thought were um, fat in their minds, right? Um Thinner individuals in my families were getting praised all the time, like, oh, look, she's so slim and beautiful and like, look at her. And then chubbier individuals, while they wouldn't um, directly aim any insults at at them, I could overhear them talking about those individuals like behind their backs. Yeah. (sighs) And it was really difficult, but then all of these constant conversations would plant themselves firmly into my mind. And I have one deep, deep regret about all of this. Um, I have a younger cousin. He is maybe eight years younger than me. And when he was a kid, he was also a chubby kid, you know? And I, I remember when I was younger, I would say out loud, um, I don't want to be fat. Like I would say that often in Thai, in English. And I would say it so often that my aunts and uncles remember me saying this and like they would tell me stories about it you know so like think about how often I actually spoke these words um and because that was ingrained within me from media from my family um I believe that I passed on this mentality or may have passed on this mentality onto my younger cousin um and because at the time like I was still young I didn't realize how my words could have affected him either Mm -hmm. so like I'm just kicking myself for like the things that I would say like on autopilot like constantly because that's what I was hearing from my family um and I'm not saying like it's 100% my family's fault because like their thoughts became my thoughts and then I was ultimately the one that passed these things on to him um and I do remember making fun of him for being a chubbier kid And it really just hurts my heart. And I would love to take that back. Um, One day I'll talk to him about it. Maybe he's listening. I don't know. But like, dude, I'm sorry. I didn't know any better, but I know now. Yeah. Yeah. She was a bitch and we apologize. (laughs) We we don't know her anymore. We don't. Kind of, but it's okay. (laughs) Well, we forget about her. Okay. (laughs) it it hurts more knowing that like you've affected other people in the same way that you were but like you didn't know it was happening you know Mm -hmm. so yeah do you have anything else about your family I mean I actually have something that ties into um what you mentioned and also the eating disorder versions if you're ready Mm. to get into that I'm down okay so similar to well not kind of similar but I was the younger one in this scenario. So when I was in elementary slash middle school, someone really close to me decided to go on a diet to prepare for like a really special event. And I just remember that this person was restricting themselves from any sugar, any carbs, rice, like literally anything that you have heard um, that is bad for you, quote unquote, bad for you, right? Just totally restricting themselves. And I remember hearing that they were going to do this and I looked Mm -hmm. up to this person. So I followed them. Like I was like, oh, like this is what they're doing. I'm going to do that too because I want to be beautiful and slim or if that's what's going to make me um, look my best, then Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. So when I was young, I started um, rejecting rice. Like, I I mean, I probably 
you know, they were also rejecting like sugar and um, other things. Mm -hmm. But I remember just sticking with rejecting rice. So I would not eat any rice, plain rice, fried rice, anything. I did not eat it. And then that has actually followed me to where I am now. Like if, Mm -hmm. if you all know me, you know that I do not like rice. Sorry if anyone's hearts are breaking because I know there are a lot of rice lovers out there. How dare you not like rice, Kim? I, you are Asian. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like when people when people hear that I don't like rice, then they are so surprised because they're like, how? Like, how do you not eat rice with every meal? I can do it. Okay. Like rice is not a priority in my life. Yeah. And and I thought about it and I was like, okay, why the fuck don't I like rice? And mm-hmm. I remembered that event when I was in elementary. I think it was like elementary school, to be honest. So like Ooh. I was still young and I honestly like I had no idea what I was doing it's not like I mean I just didn't know what I was restricting myself for really it was it was just cool to follow this person without really understanding the repercussions of doing it and in my head as I grew up I was like rice is bad for you rice will make you fat like Mm. you should not eat rice and so now I mean I I eat rice once in a while or like I rarely ever have plain rice. Like you will never, ever see me order a plain bowl of rice to add yeah. to my food. I'll ra- I'd rather have like noodles or something. But yeah, so I just, I used to think it was terrible, but I am okay with it now. I still have the, you know, residual effects because of the past and right. how that person influenced me. No blame to them at all. It's just... Yeah. Um, relating to your story where it's like it may not have been intentional at all you, you no one probably knew what they were doing and you just may be affecting someone else mm-hmm. so that's why it's kind of like try your best to be mindful of yes your your actions what you say because you never know how it will affect someone else mm-hmm. and you know just yeah that's it yeah I mean it <sighs> you know, this is how deep seated these thoughts are within us. Like we we're still dealing with this stuff today. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I also remember in middle school, there was this girl who I had never really known anybody who had gone through an eating disorder. And I remember her talking about it and being so upset about it. And, um, she would never pressure anybody else to do what she was doing, obviously, because she was hurting on the inside, but, Mm -hmm you know, you get the inkling of a thought of like, wow, you know, like I've never heard of that before. Like, oh, why are you doing this? Um, Whatever her reason was. And then you start thinking about like, oh, what could that do for me? Because maybe you don't know so much about those things, right? Yeah. Um, And yeah, when you're at an impressionable age, I'm just going to blame like brain underdevelopment for like yeah. all of our problems. Um, let me just take the scientific route. Okay. <laughs> um, and I also, if we're going to talk about aversions really quickly before we get into um, eating disorder experiences, um, I had an, like a deep, deep aversion to milk, like plain milk in a glass because every meal time because my parents were worried that I was not getting enough nutrition. I was not growing bitch. I'm short as fuck. And they wanted me to be tall and they thought milk was like the solution. Okay. But like, this is all the milk industry's fault. Okay. Thank you for making my parents think that milk was going to fucking grow this five foot Asian ass. Okay. Like it's not, it did not work. Okay. I am still short as fuck. Um, The marketing team did their job. (laughs) Those fucking bitches. Okay. Um, (laughs) So I would have to have a glass of milk at every single meal and I would have to finish it. And I remember the exact cup. Okay. It was a mini cup. It was pink. It was from Disney world. She was cute, but like not, she's not cute anymore because of what she reminds me of. Okay. Sometimes I see her in the cabinet and I get like a little traumatized. Okay. Oh my God. Um, She's wild. Um, Yeah. So, you know, milk has nutrients. It has fat, it has sugar, like a lot of good things that can help you grow, especially when you're a kid. Um, and it's, it's easier to drink something maybe than it is to eat something. So I can understand why that was chosen for me, yeah. but milk also messed me the fuck up. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure it contributed to the bad acne that I had in high school, mm. middle school, um, beginning of college because of the high sugar content probably. Um, 
and I, yeah, and I'm still short. <laughs> I'm just salty about that, okay? Because like, Fucking that milk. was the reason. I know, that was the reason I was supposed to drink it. Um, but eventually, like I, when I moved to college um, into the dorm room, I was like, I don't have to drink milk anymore. And it was a revelation. <laughs> like, I was like, I don't have to do this anymore. And then my acne cleared up. And I don't know if that's why, but she, she gone. I look pretty good now. Okay. Yeah. Look like, at her. She's glowing. I'm smooth skin. Oh Love it. Is it oil or is it like radiance? I don't know. It's okay. radiance. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the um, mist from the gods, you know? Oh my God. <laughs> I've been blessed. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so that is the, uh, that's the only aversion that I could think of. And I feel like that's a pretty strong one. You will never catch me just drinking a cup of milk sorry that's never gonna happen again maybe with cereal but not by itself um and then I just want to mention really quickly too that um the foods that any particular food that we're talking about we're not trying to demonize them we're not trying to say they are bad for you or any food is particularly good or bad these are just specific foods that we have had experiences with Mm -hmm. so don't get it twisted okay we're not trying to create new traumas here okay please <laughs> okay if you like it you eat it you own yes. it okay yes you keep doing what you do boo boo um i i think i have one more like a version okay. i want to yeah. mention Go ahead. um is meat <laughs> oh. so if you guys know me you also know i don't eat a lot of meat um again i i eat some or actually lately this year like i said i'm pescatarian so yeah. i currently am not um but i think growing up people would say like meat would make you fat, like beef Mm -hmm. and pork specifically. So as I was growing up, especially from like media, you know, that baked chicken breast, that grilled chicken breast is going to make you skinny. So I ate a lot of chicken and, or I like usually lean towards eating chicken or seafood, beef and pork. I would avoid, avoid those things. And I just, if I saw it on the table and that was all that there was on the table, I just wouldn't eat. Mm -hmm. And, um, I mean, right now still, I just, I don't eat pork um, or like sometimes I look at it and I just feel a little like, I feel like I just want to puke. Okay. like Yeah. But I like, you know, I'll pass store, things like that. It might just be the type of pork that's in Mm -hmm. the food that I ate a lot while growing up. Okay. So I have that type of aversion to meat. And so if you guys ever take me out for dinner with Brian's consent I'm probably gonna like seafood okay (laughs) good to know you know Brian has like a sign up list okay he approves certain people he's like you can take her out you can't gotta go through him first you know priorities um yeah so can I give her seafood (laughs) pescatarian right now yeah Mm -hmm. okay so um should we move into eating disorders Um, Do you want to go first, though? Because I feel like I have a lot more than you do on this one. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go into it. I mean, along with the things I mentioned earlier, like me rejecting rice and meat, things like that due to what people have told me that this type of food will do to you. All, All misconceptions, by the way, okay? Yeah. Like Tanisha said, there's not necessarily a good or bad food. All food is food. It right. just depends how much you're consuming and how it works with your body too. Mm-hmm. You know, like Everyone's dairy, dairy fucked Tanisha up. Fucked me the fuck up. Okay. okay? <laughs> but dairy's okay with me. Like I'm chill. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she likes Kimai. So okay. Yeah. <laughs> dairy. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I think, so I don't, I don't think that I have or have had a, an eating disorder. Okay. I don't know. You guys can judge. Okay. I'll tell you my experience we'll and then y'all can, we'll yeah, y'all can let yeah. me know, not judge. Give me your feedback. Okay. Mm-hmm. So as Tanisha was saying earlier, like when you were talking to your friend who was experiencing one and you're yeah. like, Oh, what would it do for me? Mm-hmm. I, in the media, when they would um, portray like restricting yourself or binge eating and puking. <sighs> yeah. Like, I'm not going to say that I wanted to try it, but I wanted to try it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was just like, I was like, wow, what a wonderful world that you can eat as much as you want, puke Mm -hmm. it all out and like have a six pack, you know, 
that does not happen guys do not do that do not rec- I do not recommend okay yeah and so I remember I have you know tried it but like it's 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 hard you know it hurts yeah. you're in a lot yeah. of pain you're uncomfortable you are literally doing something that you should not be doing mm-hmm. and I didn't know that I just I just wanted the results, not understanding what was it, what it was doing to my body. However, I did not get into the habit of it, which is why I don't think I had an eating disorder. It was more like I wanted to see how it felt and if it actually worked. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. Okay. But um, a longer um, experience that I had was in middle school. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know why. I really don't know why. I've, I was trying to think of reasons as to why this happened, but um I just I didn't eat in middle school like I would literally when it was dinner time I would go downstairs I would look at the table if it didn't look appealing I'd walk the fuck back upstairs and not eat dinner and like that would be for multiple days and it got to the point where like my parents were really concerned they're like why don't you eat and I I didn't fucking know I just was like I just didn't find food appealing at that time I was like I don't want to eat that I don't really want to eat anything I'm not Mm going to eat and I didn't even feel hungry and I, um, I just remember like my parents would like try to coerce me by like cooking food after dinner or like making eggs or something and like trying to get me to eat like a little bit. And it wasn't, I wasn't even feeling anything like negative from it that I can remember. I just remember that I didn't feel hungry and I just didn't want to eat. And even when I would go to out to dinner, sometimes I would just sit there and I would barely eat. Like I would eat just for like show, Mm -hmm. but I wasn't. I didn't want to consume anything at all. And this happened in middle school, like I said, and I think mm-hmm. it happened for like a few months. I can't really remember the time frame of it, but I do remember that that happened. And then I think from there, I just kind of got more sensitive to like meat and stuff and then yeah. gradually started fucking eating more, I guess, but I don't know. So that's what I think my experience with the eating disorder was. Mm-hmm. It could have been, you know, some sort of social issue with like me wanting to, I don't know, be skinny or like my friends or whatever. I just don't have a pinpoint so or yeah. rooted cause for that. Dude, yeah. like I, I relate because I think the two experiences that I have with um, an eating disorder, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if mine can be classified as one as well. Um, I don't have a particular trigger point in mind, like an exact moment that I knew it started. I don't know exactly how they ended either. Um, so it's, it's all a mystery. And if y'all know things, you can tell us. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I also want to say, um, if you are currently going through an eating disorder, um, if you're listening to this, we're, we're not trying to shame you. We just, you know, encourage you to get help, to get healthy in the way that you need to get healthy. Um, talk to a nutritionist, talk to your doctor, things like that. Um, But these are our experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, So going into mine, um, my experiences. So I have looked at my body um, and I have been unhappy with how I looked, particularly just thinking that my waist wasn't as tiny as it could Mm -hmm. have been proportionally to the rest of me because I would look at other girls Um, especially in like middle school changing rooms, you know, when you would change for the first time, like in a changing room, um, that had an impact on me. Um, But I never thought seriously about using food in order to change my body. I mostly used exercise. Um, So Mm. it's, it's slightly different for me in that way, both still equally toxic, you know, whichever route that you might have chosen, but um, I did not choose food. But regardless, there are two experiences that I went through. First one, this is a this is a roller coaster. Okay, are you ready, Kim? I? I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, so this happened, I think, elementary school, um, end of elementary school, beginning of middle school, and this actually started, I believe, when I came back from a Thailand trip one year. I used to go every other year, um, and I would frequently <laughs> come back not 100%, I would feel sick, maybe due to like dehydration, maybe just due to like, um, maybe the water there, you know, I'm not entirely sure, but I would also not feel, I would never feel great, really, when I came back home. Um, This one time that I came back home, um, I was kind of 
nauseated. Um, I had fevers and I had headaches and my family was worried about me. And I think I convinced myself that I had some type of illness because my family was so worried that I had something and they were convinced that I had something. And I never really remember a doctor saying to us that there was something that they could pinpoint that was wrong with me. I think my family just, um, because they were so worried, I felt their worry. And then I put um, an illness upon myself, right? Uh, Like a general illness. Um, And I don't know if you guys know, but (laughs) I live here with my parents and I have two sets of aunts and uncles that live five minutes away from my home. So technically it's like having six parents. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I am an only child and my aunts and uncles do not have kids. So I am where they put their energy when I was young. All eyes on her. It was, <laughs> they all have keys. They just come in whenever they want. Like, I just, I want to like, you know, change the lock sometimes or something. Oh okay. <laughs> we love them, but like, it was a lot. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I was convinced that there was something going on with me. I think that's where this eating disorder started. So I began to have aversions towards food in general and like smells of foods. And when I would smell food, I didn't want to go eat it. Like, it wasn't like, oh my gosh, like I'm so excited for hash browns. It was like, ooh, I don't like that smell. I'm going to stay away from that. Um, I don't want to eat. And I remember because I was nauseous after coming back from my Thailand trip, like number one, I hate the feeling of throwing up. I hate the feeling of like being nauseous. Um, And that is a constant throughout my entire life. So I, I think in my mind, I was like, if I don't eat food, then I will not throw up. (laughs) And I think I was so scared of throwing up that I didn't want to eat food, Yeah, which is kind of, I feel like this is unusual or maybe like I haven't specifically heard of a moment like this, but that is what happened to me. Um, So I would get nervous and anxious when I knew mealtimes were coming up and like, I would want to hide in my room and just not come down. And then, you know, my dad with his clean the plate mentality, he'd be like, why the fuck aren't you eating? which would be even more stressful for me, right? Yeah, I bet. Gosh. Um, And I also remember this particular time in elementary school, I went on a beach trip with my best friend's family. And I remember it was breakfast time and I was hungry. But as soon as I got close to like the buffet breakfast station and I saw all the people eating, like I remember looking in there and smelling the food and just being like, I really don't want to eat because I felt nauseous, like as soon as the smell of food hit me. Um, So, and then my friend's dad would ask me like, hey, why aren't you eating? And I was like, oh, I just don't wanna eat. And he would like press me a little bit more and I would be like, well, like saying this verbally for the first time out loud, like the smell of food is making me nauseous. I think he couldn't wrap his mind around that. And he just laughed it off and he let it go and he walked away and, I'm pretty sure I ate that day. Okay. But just not at the time that everybody else was eating. Yeah. Um, And thinking back on that, like I was so young, like I was a baby and like this parent is asking me why I'm not eating. Like, I'm sure he was devastated, but just like maybe didn't know what to do in the moment. Um, Yeah. Which, yeah, it's difficult. Like if, if it's not your kid, you don't really know everything that's going on with them. So Mm -hmm. Um, even, even if, it's your kid or someone you're close to sometimes you don't even notice or like you don't know how to recognize it right and I feel like especially with um well I don't know especially I feel like with Asian parents there's a lot of um unfamiliarity with Mm -hmm. a lot of illnesses yes and you know physical mental illnesses all of those illnesses a lot of unfamiliarities okay like I I've sprained my ankle broken my pinky I've had many injuries in my life I have never gone to the hospital I have not <laughs> that's a whole nother to... episode Kim yeah, for you that's a lot okay but that's it but yeah the unfamiliarity that also contributes as to why like people don't recognize or like don't know how to help people it, you can't help someone if you you don't know that they need help you know that's true I I laughed when you said they weren't familiar with, um, or that Asian parents sometimes aren't familiar with certain illnesses because um, my aunts would give me 
Chinese medicine, which is basically dried ground up herbs um, yeah. that are turned into a powder, right? And then you're supposed to, or the, the ones that I took, you mix them in like warm water and kind of make a tea, but you still feel the grit and the silt of all of those ground herbs, okay? in the water and you're supposed to drink it or I was about she was like down the whole cup and I was like okay and I was nauseous before that she's like this will help you it was bitter as fuck the water was black and grainy okay think about that for a second okay got some dirt outside and (laughs) threw it in a cup it just like whatever you think (laughs) um Chinese medicine in dirt form tastes like like that's what it tasted like And I threw up after I drank that because it was so disgusting, not because of whatever I had before. It just, I chugged all of it and it just was the worst to me and it did not end up helping me. Um, Herbal medicine has its time and its place and to the audience that wants it. Okay. So yes, Anisha did not want it. The audience was not me. (laughs) No, no, the audience was not me. Um, (laughs) And then, yeah, so my, my aversions during this time towards food and the smell of food would happen sometimes and not happen other times. And I don't think I ever went hungry, but I could not force myself to eat during the times that like, I did not want to eat because of these aversions. Right. Mm. Um, And I don't know how long this lasted at all. Like I really can't remember. And I don't know how I got over it, but honestly, like it just went away one day. And I never, it never really happened again. Um, Yeah. And then I have one more story. Um, This kind of relates more to fitness. And this is during my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. Um, So my first, uh, the first story that I talked about, like, I feel like it had a lot of, a lot to do with anxiety and nervousness over the feeling of being nauseous, right? This one also has to do with me being stressed and anxious and nervous. Okay. So I, during senior year of, senior year of high school, I was nervous about soccer practice every single day. It was always like, what, sixth period, okay? Um, I would always have history class right before that. And during this time, I was not good at soccer, okay? Like I just, my skill level went down. I had stopped playing club. I was not practicing as much as the other girls were, so I was not as good. Um, my stamina, my endurance, absolute fucking shit. Okay. Um, I knew I was bad and I was ashamed of it because that was my identity during the time. The way that I performed determined my worth as a person. I could no longer perform. Therefore I felt like a piece of shit. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I felt like a fraud. I was like, wow, I play soccer, but like, not really. Cause like I'm benched because I'm not good. Right. And because I knew that my performance would be so terrible every day, I did not feel excited to go to practice. I was nervous every time because I knew that like, I wouldn't do well. And conditioning days were the worst. Like you want me to run ladders? Like you want me to do sprints? Like oh, I'm gonna die. <laughs> um, those were the worst times. Okay, so yeah. in the class before practice, I had history class um, and I would put my stuff down and I would sit and I would get there early and I would be anxious immediately because I knew that soccer was next after history class. And I was so worried and I was so nervous that I was anxious to the point of nausea <laughs> and I would excuse myself to go to the bathroom Um, just being like, oh, I have to pee, you know, whatever. And I would go to the bathroom and I would sit on the toilet and I would just put my head down between my knees and just sit there and try to collect myself like to get over my nausea. I would never get over my nausea. I would have to get up and go back to class still nauseous because class was going to start soon and like you can't be late, you know. Mm -hmm. So then I would go back to class um, and just try to be okay and pretend like everything was okay. I never told anybody what was going on. And during this time, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm feeling nauseous because I am hungry. Maybe I'm nauseous because I have an empty stomach. So I would eat an insane amount of almonds, okay? Because that was like the snack that I thought was going to help me. And like oh, <laughs> the entire class period, like one hour of class, like I would be eating almonds and just like to try to like calm myself down, right? <laughs> um, and that all happened because I was lightheaded during one practice and I thought I hadn't eaten enough. 
So that Mm. caused me to snack constantly during that time period. And this is how, this is the story of how I created a special hell for myself in my own mind and never told anybody about it until now. Congrats, guys. You are special. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. Yes. Experience my trauma with me. Um, So that is something that has to do with fitness. That is something that has to do with food. And it all centered around stress and being anxious and nervous. So those are my, I don't know if you can call them eating disorders, but they definitely involve the topics that we're talking about today. Yeah, for sure. Um, And know that if you had anything like this, if you were ever an athlete, maybe that went through something that I went through, like you are not alone because I made that entire senior year special hell for myself that one period before soccer practice. So my God. Yeah. Hey guys. So we got another long topic for you guys. So you know what that means. We're splitting it up into two again. So you guys get another back to back with this. So special. So exciting, (laughs) honestly. So that's it for our episode, guys. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Instagram at kinda.tempted. Subscribe and give us a like on YouTube and we'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.